Hello, I'm Dr. Carly Pond, clinical lead at Biomsite. This video is a part of a series where I walk through how a practitioner would look at sample results. Before we dive in, I need to remind you that while I am a doctor, I am not your doctor. The information in this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. Please speak to your healthcare provider before making any changes to your healthcare. One of the most well-researched aspects of the microbiome is LPS, or lipopolysaccharide. This is a structural component found in the cell walls of specific bacteria, like proteobacteria and bacteroidetes. LPS is a toxin that interacts extensively with the human host, causing inflammation and contributing to many different diseases, everything from autoimmune disease to depression to heart disease. Basically, the more and more research we do around LPS, the more we are finding it playing a role in many different diseases. So if you have elevated proteobacteria or bacteroidetes, then you most likely have elevated LPS levels that are putting your health at risk. So reducing these bacteria is generally the first step in microbiome modulation. Now, the LPS from proteobacteria is different than bacteroidetes LPS. Proteobacteria LPS is more inflammatory. So making sure proteobacteria levels are balanced is the most important. So proteobacteria will be found in the pathobiont section. So the first thing you want to do if your proteobacteria is high is look at who exactly is elevated. So we we'll want to focus in on the genus level here as the 16S testing is not accurate for the species level. So the most common elevations that we'll come across are Dysophil Vibrio, Bilophila, Sutterella, Paracetarella, Klebsiella, and Escherichia. So for most proteobacteria overgrowth, berberine is my go-to. Berberine is a compound found in specific herbs such as organ grape. It is antimicrobial. So berberine is an alkaloid compound, so it can be toxic. It is not to be used in pregnancy, and it may interact with other medications and supplements. So use with caution and under the supervision of a qualified practitioner. Berberine is going to be effective for Sutterella, Paracetarella, Klebsiella, and Escherichia. It is also effective for many other proteobacteria, such as Haemophilus, Pseudomonas, Morganella, Proteus, Citrobacter, and others. In fact, most aromatic herbs like oregano and thyme are going to be helpful for proteobacteria overgrowths. The exception is the hydrogen sulfide producers. So those are going to be Disulfovibrio and Bilophila. So if Disulfovibrio or Bilophila are elevated, reducing dairy, reducing fat and protein consumption, and considering a vegan diet or using inulin may be helpful. Additional therapeutics are going to include Odonopsis, garlic, and Bacillus coagulans probiotic for Disulfovibrio. Additional therapeutics for bilophila include garlic, chamomile, and lactobacillus rhamnosus GG probiotics. Decreasing disulfovibrio and bilophila can be tricky. So here are some tips from clinical practice. Diet is often essential, particularly eliminating dairy and reducing sugar. Codonopsis may work really well, but a high-quality product is difficult to find. Inulin is the go-to for many practitioners, but it can sometimes flare other overgrowths, such as bacteroides, so be careful there. There is also another phylum that contains bacteria with LPS, and that is bacteroidetes. So that is going to be under our commensal section. So the most common bacteroidetes genera that are going to be in this phyla are Bacteroides and Prevotella. In Western cultures, Bacteroides tends to be the dominant genus. Typically, Bacteroides will be dominant due to higher protein and higher fat diets. More plant-based diets may prefer Prevotella. 
Bacteroides and Prevotella are very diverse genera, meaning that the individual species differ quite a lot in their activity. Typically, Bacteroides is elevated in a diet with high amounts of saturated fat and protein from animal sources. So incorporating more plant foods is a good first step to modulate this genus. Otherwise, beta 1,3 slash 1,6 D-glucan is my go-to tool to reduce bacteroides. However, not all beta-glucans are the same, so you want to look for that specific type of beta-glucan. Other types can actually increase bacteroides. It is also important to note that most prebiotics like inulin or galactooligosaccharides will increase bacteroides, so they may not be the best tool. I don't often encounter Prevotella overgrowth as the patients I work with are primarily based in the U.S., but I have encountered it a few times. Sometimes slippery elm or triphala has helped with modest reduction. Olive leaf, rosemary, lauric acid, and inulin may be other agents to help reduce Prevotella. The LPS from Prevotella or Bacteroides is less inflammatory than proteobacteria. So proteobacteria is definitely the first thing to focus on and to target if it is overgrown. Bacteroides and Prevotella are going to be really important to reduce if there is damage to the gut lining in the instance of leaky gut, then the LPS from Bacteroides or Prevotella may actually contribute more to inflammation. 